In today's video, we're gonna be discussing the three lessons I learned from playing Apple. I made a few mistakes playing this fun and I really regret them. And I wanna share them with you so that we can all learn from them and make better decisions going forward as investors. So we earn over 150,000 per year in dividends at this channel. And my performance value shows that I'm up 28% for the year. Sometimes the dividends fluctuate at this channel, the dividends and the day, uh, the total uh, gains because I, I sold some cornerstone uh, this week to lower my margin. And so that affected the tax lots for E-Trade and they are updating over the weekend. So sometimes the unrealized gains can change, but the performance numbers never change. Okay. So 28% is what we're up for the year. Uh, the SP is up 20%. So we're beating the key benchmark there, and we were at 50% for the year, beating all indexes. But closed end funds had a tough month during the month of October. So it wasn't just Cornerstone. It was all closed end funds that fell. If you factor back in Cornerstone's 15% dip, we'd be back at the 50% at the mark from where we were up earlier this year. And also um, Apple, which is one of the names that I'm mentioning here in this video, which it's the key um, uh, theme of this video today. Um, I lost some in that, and that's also why we lost some percentage points from the highs. But I'm still living the fire lifestyle, and so can you. Email me for my e-guides at akintod48 at gmo.com if you're interested in doing the same. Um, so everyone can do this, like I said. Uh, for every $1 you put in your account, you get $4 of purchasing power. So this almost uh, this around a million dollars of purchasing power is used to get that income that you see of over $150,000 per year in dividends, and um, that uh, the performance that you see me getting, 28%, that's because I tie most of my investments to the indexes and I use some margin on top of the index performance that you see uh, daily in the markets. I use some margin, so of course I'm going to get extra performance. So I'm just using a fraction of that margin purchasing power. I have about 150000 in debt. It is low interest debt, as I say to all uh, newcomers at this channel, if they don't know, um, I'm sure people who watch this channel daily are tired of me saying this, but it's very important. Um, this margin debt is around 6% interest. I negotiated it down many times or a couple times, and it's cheaper than credit cards. So to me, this is the way to live the FIRE lifestyle and be financially independent out of your brokerage account. This $150,000 in margin debt will be paid back in less than a year as my dividends of over $150,000 pay that back. Then my account will be plus 150000 and my debt will be at zero. That's a, another feature that credit cards don't offer. When you pay the credit card debt down, you're just at zero debt. But when you pay your, your debt down in your account, in your brokerage account, then your, your value rises by the equivalent amount. So 150000 in dividends, my account will rise by, and uh, my debt will be at zero. I'll then be left with all these dividend-paying assets to myself, paying me monthly cash flow for life, which pay my bills each year and also help qualify to banks for loans. Not just personal loans to get ahead, but also just a, a car loan or a house loan so that you can um, you know, live without a nine to five. Okay, so um, the first uh, lesson that I learned from playing Apple, which again is the Yield Max Cover Call Fund on Apple, the synthetic call fund, um, the first lesson was that I should have trusted the index strategy more, okay? If you go to, uh, I use Zacks to look at my weightings of my holdings. If you go here to the S&P holdings, you'll see that 7% that, uh, is the Apple uh, weighting percentage in the S&P. So Apple is a very large part of the indexes. And um, I should have known that, you know, most fund managers and uh, other indexed uh, vehicles out there are trying to match the S&P. So they're going to have Apple as the top weighted fund as well. So for every dollar that goes into the S&P, you know, 7% uh, of that goes to Apple. So I should have just trusted that. I knew that. I mean, that's why I made this. I, I knew this when I made the video the first time on Apple. But uh, I, I, uh, there were things that were happening in October, and we'll get into that. The second uh, thing I should have done was listen to Buffett. Okay, when Buffett and Icon uh, wanted uh, to buy Apple, I should have paid attention to that. Apple is very fundamentally sound. It has billions in net income. It has uh, tons of growth prospects, and it virtually dominates our lives. It's in every part of our lives. 
So um, I wanted to own Apple, uh, even though the greats like Buffett and Icon were saying to own this fund, and I knew it was a large part of the indexes. I still I thought I was a bit overweight, first of all, in Apple because I had a large percentage in, in Apple already through Cornerstone. Okay, Cornerstone, as you can see here, Apple, if we go down to the sixth page, you can see Apple is clearly larger than any other position there in the uh, IT section. And so I was overweight Apple to begin with. I have about 400 grand in Cornerstone. Okay, so Cornerstone uh, had a lot of Apple once again. And if I have so much money in Cornerstone, I don't want to uh, get hurt with two of a kind uh, by owning the Apple stock and uh, owning it through my uh, this index fund. I mean, this close in fund that that I have so much money in. So uh, I paired back Apple for that reason and also because uh, Apple is 50% um, maintenance, okay? So with the 20% dividend that it was fetching at the time, okay, Apple, okay, it had 50% maintenance. And to me, that was unacceptable because the cornerstone yield I was getting was 20% and the Apple yield was less, but yet the maintenance was, as you can see here, um, 50%. So it wasn't a good risk reward for me for that low dividend and the high maintenance. If you need help understanding maintenance, that's in my volume three margin e-guide, okay? How to use dividends uh, and margin to live financially free out of your brokerage account. So 50% was too much for me to, to bear, okay? The cornerstone, uh, in contrast, had a 30% maintenance level. So uh, it made sense for me to put most of my money in cornerstone plus cornerstone is an index. So I put 400 grand in cornerstone because not only is it index, but it's a uh, five star and morning star. If people um, ask, why do I put so much in cornerstone specifically? Why not any other index fund that has a lot of Apple in it? Because it's five star and it beats the indexes, as you can see below. Okay. Um, it, you have to factor back in dividends and drips, of course. And so um, a cornerstone, that's why I have so much in it. You just have to learn how to play this fund properly. It has a rights offering every year. I have an e-guide on Cornerstone, Volume 4, if you need help playing Cornerstone and timing it around its rights offering. And then on Discord, uh, we have about 500 members uh, who uh, are also watching for that uh, rights offering in Cornerstone. When you buy my e-guides, you get free access to Discord and my phone number for life. So keep that in mind. Okay, so... Uh, the maintenance was just too high for Apple at the time, and the dividends were too low. Okay, so that's why I sold out of Apple, and I had too much exposure in Cornerstone already. Plus, during the month of October, uh, it was a rough month, as, as you remember me saying at the beginning of the video. So I was selling from Apple and other things where I could uh, to buy more Cornerstone during the dip. And it really paid off because Cornerstone had a strong bounce back. Just like all the other closed-in funds that sold off, it bounced back strong. It's still off of its highs, though. So again, that's where we get that 50%. You know, if I if I were, if this were to make it back to, to its highs, Cornerstone, I'd be almost back at 50%. That and funds like Apple that fell for me. Now, Apple already had its move up. I don't even need to show you a chart. It had to move right back up to where uh, the old highs were for the year. Um, it's almost regrettable to look at. I should have trusted that chart. I should have uh, seen uh, how everything was lining up. Let me just show you how textbook Apple was. Okay, I remember making videos about this while we were traveling in Europe uh, with a family. And um, it was looking textbook, but I just, I couldn't own it at the time because of the maintenance, because of the low dividend, and because uh, everything was falling during October. And uh, I, and I had to sell from where I could to harvest tax losses, et cetera, et cetera, to, to lower, to raise my available withdrawal because that was high maintenance. And I had to go into lower maintenance names like Cornerstone, which again had a nice bounce back, but so did Apple. It had a huge bounce back. So I should have trusted this chart when we were right at the 200-day moving average and all the moving averages were close. By the way, this is in my volume two e-guide if you need help understanding charts. Uh, I was pounding the table on Apple. It's just that Again, I'm going to say one last time. I, I at the time the trade off was too great for me. Now we're overbought in Apple, and uh, so I've I've initiated a small position back in Apple, just two thousand, and I'm hoping that it, it pulls back so I can get back into it because now the dividend in Apple is uh, is a lot higher. Now it's a twenty eight percent. So I should have trusted the charts, and I should have trusted the. Uh, the fact that when charts rise and the prices rise and the premiums rise, and that's when the dividend rises again for Apple. And I was, all, I was always saying you could lock in the yield down here. You could buy your shares here cheap. That's what I was saying in the last video. You could get more shares in at this level, at those lower prices down here. 
And then you could, uh, when the when Apple inevitably resumes its uptrend, then they're going to raise the dividends because the premiums rose. Okay. Also, erosion would be less in Apple since the yield was smaller, and the shares move less in Apple than other yield max funds. So it would have been a good fund just to hold on to for capital appreciation and dividends and uh, less volatility in my account. Um, so now that the maintenance is still fifty percent, but the dividend is higher again, I've gone back into Apple. Now it's it's fetching a, a nice yield, so I put two thousand in Apple. That took up some of my maintenance, though. Um, so you know it took up fifty percent maintenance, so that took up a thousand of my available for withdrawal. So be careful with that. But now it's beating my interest rate uh, uh, um, handsomely uh, that I'm charged on my on my debt. So I don't mind having some Apple. Okay. Um, so those are the three lessons that I learned from Apple. Okay, I should have trusted. Uh, the index strategy that I use here and how and knowing that it's such a large weighting in the indexes, I should have listened to Buffett and the great ones and Carl Icahn, uh, knowing that the fundamentals were strong and how dominant Apple is in your life. And uh, I should have trusted the charts. But at the time, the maintenance was too high for me and the dividend was too low and Cornerstone was too great of an opportunity to pass up. So I went to Cornerstone and it turned out to be a great move because my account is back up to 28%. But still, uh, I regret uh, not playing Apple better. So anyway, we're still living the fire lifestyle here at this channel. And again, so can you. Email me for my e-guides at akintop48 at gmail.com if you're interested in doing the same. Sometimes you make mistakes, but as long as your dividends cover your mistakes, you can keep living to fight another day. And again, when I sold Apple, I bought Cornerstone immediately. So when the when the bounce back came, I still rallied in my account and took some got some tax losses from the Apple move. It wasn't all of a loss. Plus, I got some dividends from it but I still could have played that better. And that's what we're doing at this channel. We're all trying to learn here and get better. And we just hope that the mistakes are small and that our success uh, still continues. Okay, so if you like the video, click like or subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.